I'm here at KWI Grinding in Coventry and I'm going to learn today how you cut a square in a piece of steel like this using electrical discharge machining. So Craig, what is the material that you've actually now set ready to cut? Well, basically, the material set to cut now is a hardened gauge plate, so it's around 6870 Rockwell, which is obviously too hard to manually machine itself using an automated miller. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is actually, now it's set, is, is, is show us what you, how you're going to program it and show how simple it is on this Joe Miles machine from Eurospark. The basic programming is you've got your program block here, you can go into an edit function on the button there, and obviously you just basically manually input your X and Y in your Z positions incrementally and then it creates a G code to obviously run the cutter around under, under the piece. So if you were doing it from the start, what would you do? Uh, basically, you'd write the program, so you go into your edit lines, go into edit your file, modify, and then you'd be able to change your actual positions in your X, Y, and Z. Is that your starting position? It is, yeah, that would be your starting position. So you'd always come up with Z plus above the job so you don't crash into it and cause any disruption to the job at all. Um, obviously, your next line down then would be where the centre of the job actually is, with your Z still plus so you're not crashing into it and damaging the electrode or the workpiece. And then you'd be carrying on then obviously your incremental positions for your X and your Y, obviously to profile around you and the cut you're putting into the job. So essentially you're just moving 12 mil e yeah, either on either right. side? Nice and simple, yeah. Okay, once we've done that, what's next? Uh, the next job is uh, obviously dry run the programme, just to make sure nothing's going to crash into anything as we go along. I might stop to tweet it a little bit. So set that on zero, set your auto, and press go. You can go onto a graph screen so it actually show you what it's profiling to the job. So this is a simulation of what we're actually yeah, going to be doing exactly. in the machine? Yeah, so you know nothing's going to go wrong at all with your programme and you're not going to crash into any voices or bend any electrodes or anything like that. So you can see your incremental movement as it's cutting around the square and then it'll go back into the centre then, feed up through the Z so you know exactly what shape you're cutting into it. Okay, now that's brilliant, the programme inside. A couple of other quick questions before we see it in action. Yeah. What's the electrode that you're using on here yeah. and what, what determines what electrode to use? Um, it's basically just a normal copper electrode which we generally use for machining steel. Um, you can get away with using graphite as well depending on the hardness of the steel and the material makeup, whether it's powder or wrapped steel. Uh, nine times out of ten with gauge plane and stuff like that, because it's hot carbon based you get away using a copper electrode. And with different materials you need to machine at different speeds, how does this machine know how to how to cut this type of material. Is that all in your software? Yeah, it's all inside the program software. If you tab over to here on your E keys, it obviously creates all the parameters, your voltage, your amps, your flushing distances, working So you, you tell it what material it is and it'll tell you how to cut it? That's it, yeah. Let's see this uh, actually cut the material. That's the, that's the key thing that we want to get yeah. to, so let's do this. No So we're now uh, cutting, Craig. How long is the, old, the cycle going to uh, take to do one pass? Uh, it'll roughly take about five minutes, obviously, to profile around the edge of that square because we're only going sort of half a mil deep on it. And what is the maximum depth you could go on this type of material using this sort of electrode? Um, we do some jobs where we're putting hexes in 200 mil deep in jobs and it's holding tolerances of like 10 microns across a 200 mil length. And what about the criticality of the, the, the water that you're using here? Does it have to be a, a certain type? Is it, what's the purpose? Yeah, it's mainly steel kit. It's um, synthetic paraffin. Obviously, it stops the carbon clogging up and obviously any water rusting anything up. So nothing sticks to it. It makes it really clean to start with. And that's, that's what you need for the conductivity, yeah, I suppose. definitely, yeah. And then tell me about the, the security of this water in it. I mean, there's never any leaks. I mean, this is obviously, I suppose, how the, the Joe Miles machine's built, but that's important. Yeah, definitely. It's got a complete full, full door seal, obviously around the front panel and through the sides. And you've got your two clip latches and you've got a, a leak switch on it as well. So if the pressure drops down too low, it will stop the machine and it'll alert you to any problems. And, and what are these areas of this machine for here as well then? Is this just like a height dial testing? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just a height dial gauge to let you know obviously how far down you're cutting and you're, how far you're jumping up on your flushing speed. Uh, and you also have manual machines, don't you, from Eurospark as well? Yes, we do. Yeah. What, what fundamentally, other than the fact that you can control it, the control is the difference? Because it must, it must not take into account all the material things that we've spoken about already? No, it doesn't. It's a lot more user-friendly with the parameter settings and stuff like that, because obviously they're designed for different types of steel, 
different types of black shaves and things like that. So it aids your cutting a lot quicker time, so you get a lot quicker cycle time. And you reckon about 30% of your business here at KWI is now in EDM. That's grown a lot since you've had Eurosparks yeah, solution. Yeah, definitely. Originally we started off with one machine, but it was mainly odd jobs we were doing on it, and it's pretty much grew from there with the tool industry, obviously hard manufacturing of metals. And is it generally down to the fact that you've got harder materials that need maybe square edges, deeper holes, that's where these, these machines come in? Yeah, it's a lot of stuff obviously you couldn't manually do broaching and things like that with a lot of the formwork that we do. But a lot of the stuff, it took us the carbon, you get a lot of tied up holes, positions, stuff like that and forms actually in it where you can't physically manual machine it on a miller. Okay, well let's hope that this one comes out square. Fingers crossed. <laughs>